We're back. 2008 could be considered a year of restoration for the Australian Rally Championship. Two rounds remain and there are exciting new additions to the calendar too. A couple of the sport's best ambassadors rather, are with us today. We say good afternoon to Neil Bates and Simon Evans. Hello, Hello boys. Okay, guys. Our own John Smiles is with us too. And I want to start with you if I can, JS. Is the future generally looking brighter? It's certainly looking a lot better, Rusty, that's for sure. I mean, for a start, the next round of the Australian Rally Championship will be held on Tarmac, Rally of Burnie. That's a big plus. Then the final round of the championship will be held on classic rally roads up at Coffs Harbour, and that's a return to the credibility of rallying in Australia. Then there's the, uh, the amount of competition that's coming into the championship, not only in terms of the, uh, the drivers, but also in terms of the teams which may be entering. There's a big rumour that Honda is considering entering the championship next year. Good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Neil, you lead the championship currently by 57 points over Simon's brother, Eli, and you're 96 clear of the bloke next to you. Have you written off... Simon's chances yet from the championship? Ah, yeah, he's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, look... Uh, Team yeah, orders. <laughs> yeah, so many people uh, talk about other oh, championships, yours, you know, but there's still a lot of points to be had in this championship, uh, you know, and at the moment we're just looking at one round at a time, which is what we've been doing all year, and I think that's the only way to play it, you know. I haven't even, haven't even looked at the sums on where we would need to finish because we just want to go in these rallies, finish as high as we possibly can and, you know, that, that's the way to, to stay at the top of the championship. Well, the bloke who has looked at the sums, of course, is Simon Evans. Simon, I've got to ask the question. Firstly, congratulations on your big win in South Australia last weekend. But uh, are you now considering the championship as a support to Neil or do you still think you're in with a big chance? Well, the competitor in me says that I'm still in with a big chance. Uh, when I look at the championship, I, I look at... What, what I can achieve in the championship and the way I see it is I've got the possibility of achieving wins in all the heats till the end of the season. And then I, I sort of look to my brother then and so I say, mate, you need to beat Neil for me. <laughs> 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 but yeah, look, reality is I think, you know, I'm probably a bit of a broken record here, same as Neil, I've just got to do the best job I can and, uh, and now I can be satisfied with that. You know, my, my, my philosophy is never give up and you know, I won't. I'll just push and push and push until we get to the end and uh, we'll see where we end up. But you know, obviously the, the main goal is to get Toyota the manufacturer's title and for one of us to be on top of the podium at just the end of the year. Just remember that check's in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, there's always been this concern about the dangers and the costs of tarmac rallying. We're off to the Tasmanian Tarmac Challenge next, a, a new event in Burnie. How beneficial is this type of event, particularly for giving young blokes the sort of experience they need if they're going to have a crack at the World Rally Championship? A absolutely. It's, it's vital uh, you know, to get those sort of guys in. One thing, Chris Atkinson is, is currently out there campaigning for Australia on the world scene and you know, he, he does lack tarmac experience and I think his speed on tarmac is incredible. He's taken faster stage wins against Sebastian Loeb, which goes to show his talent. So, you know, if we can get another driver up there and backing him up, that's what we really need to do now. And to do that, you know, we've got to provide a championship that supplies basically a smaller, a smaller compact model of the world championship. And, and that's the best way to do it, is to obviously have a tarmac round in Tasmania. And Neil, after Tasmania, of course, we go back to Coffs Harbour. Now, Coffs mm -hmm. Harbour was a victim of uh, the desire by the Australian Rally Championship to bring rallies to the cities. So because it's Coffs Harbour, it was alleged that no one would go there. Now we're going back to Coffs Harbour, to classic rally roads that you enjoy so well. Question for you, do you think they should have ever moved away from Coffs Harbour? Uh, I think that's a pretty easy one to answer. You know, in hindsight, uh, everyone really loved the Coffs Harbour rally, you know, 10 odd years ago. And, you know, we've battled to have a, a good New South Wales round since. And, you know, it was incredibly well supported by the town. It's on fantastic roads. And, you know, everyone loved going there because it's a nice place to be. It was run out of nice resorts and you know Simon's competed on the roads they're just fantastic roads and it's a nice place to rally. An open open question to you both now of the other drivers that you're up against this year who has most impressed you and why? Uh, look this year you'd have to say uh, Eli Evans has you know stepped up to the mark this year he's doing a fantastic job and you know uh, he's you know where he is in the championship he's second in the championship at the moment he did a a fantastic job last week and in South Australia and you know for sure he's probably been the the one that's been the biggest surprise packet this year he's uh, you know he's always been fast but lack consistency. 
Rusty, earlier this year you were at the Repco uh, uh, Rally New Zealand yeah. launch and it was mooted there that there was the possibility of a Tasman series yes. in Australia. Tasman being Australia versus New Zealand. Now, to you, what do you think? Is it a possibility? Uh, yeah, look, I think that's definitely a possibility. Would there be much competition? Or? <laughs> oh, look, it's, yeah. competition would be tough in, in yeah. New Zealand. Uh, when you go, <clears throat> when we step across the ditch and, and we go over to their country and do a race there, I'm sure we'd find that we would struggle to be in the top five there. But hopefully it would be the same the other way. When they come to Australia and into our roads and our conditions, it would be the same thing. So I think it could, as long as they've got even events in both countries, I think it would be a fantastic championship. Uh, I think we could be better at rallying than what we are at football, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Final quick question for you both as we, uh, as we wrap this up. Should we be structuring the championship, do you think, to entice the likes of a Cody Crocker, a Dean Herridge, a Scott Petter to come back and play in the game, even if it was only for a couple of events a year? Uh, yeah, look, uh, yeah, we would love to have them in the championship. We had them in the, all of them in the, the round in Canberra and you know, it was great to have the competition there. You know, Simon certainly showed them a clean set of heels, which was you know, very good from a Team TRD perspective. And, but you know, for sure we'd like them at every round. But uh, you know, the, the Asia Pacific Championship has lured them out of the Australian Rally Championship. It's a bit like the football players going to England and obviously there's more money there. And, you know, that's where they've gone, but for sure it would be great for the championship if they're back. Boys, thanks for stopping by today. All the very best for the remainder of the championship. It's going to be an exciting conclusion to 2008, there's no doubt about that. Looking forward to it. There they Absolutely. are. Neil Bates and Simon Evans, and our thanks to our own John Smales.